Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Shirley with Spirit of Matter. And the Ascendant is right on 22 degrees Aries, ruled by this fierce Mars coming to exact opposition to Pluto. And I, I actually want to talk about something that has to do more with relations. And that will have to do both with career and income, um, which sometimes is related to your location, um, studies, uh, in whichever way or shape or form you choose to do that, or teachings, and uh, relations, okay? Um, Mars is sextile in Uranus, and there are very interesting themes playing out also with Chiron, um, which Mars squares, betrayal is one of those themes. And when you think about betrayal, usually people think about responding to betrayal with revenge. And one of the epiphanies that I had, that I tend to naturally do that, but um, uh, but that was, I, I had an emotional experience that was immediately released of uh, betrayal. Uh, and that sometimes is just collision of people's behavioral patterns. Um, and then I sense that like the other energy is kind of worried, like, what will I do now about this? And I'm like, what do you do when you experience betrayal? Well, you let it the fuck go. Okay? You let it go. And that's bringing me to something to do with relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic relationships, but I said what I said, Uranus better per se, Uranus is divorce, Venus sign is relationship, better per se is the uh, uh, experiences that can have to do with betrayal and even uh, sexual autonomy, okay? And uh, what does Uranus come to do in that respect? Because this opposition with Mars and Pluto, we cannot look at it without context. And Mars sextiling Uranus is coming to liberate us from something. And oftentimes we would go to extremes with Uranus uh, from various points of views, various perspectives uh, to kind of integrate them. And I compare Uranus uh, to the silly walk and the belly dancer. The way you do belly dance is you separate the parts of your body, practice each separately, and then try to bring them together. And this is a, a part of what Uranus does in every sign where it's at, or with every fixed star that it touches. So it takes a process, and it's a tedious process, um, and it requires a lot of patience and radical acceptance. So when we talk about Uranian relations, whether they're at work, in relation to your career, in relation to uh, your uh, family, even in relation to, uh, let's say, housing, um, what else, siblings, then Uranus might go through various phases that are usually unexpected. And its objective is to practice all of this and liberate you from what has been holding you back. That can be a dream, that can be a life mission, that can be uh, uh, some, something you're meant to do here. Um, and the way Uranus works is on the life energy. So many a time it will express itself as either a kind of uh, an emotional experience that you let go of or um, a sexual Okay, uh, uh, sexual drive that seems to be misplaced, unusual, uh, depending on the aspects. Now, Mars is sextile in Uranus, so it's less worrying. But um, if you look to the essence, what's important is, and especially now that Mars also trines Neptune, that you don't sacrifice yourself. Okay, with the hard aspects or the Uranus opposition, we have the midlife crisis. Um, Uranus is calling us to not to sacrifice ourselves. And you know, there are times where we do. Okay, if you raise children, 
then very likely uh, you have to sacrifice a lot of your time, your effort, your resources. Um, and if you haven't had a good life before that, that can be either you have this good life with your children or you end up like in the 40s, 50s and then uh, you say, okay, I've given a lot to this and now I'm going on a trip solo and budget for that. Um, I said what I said, but if you're doing budget, um, right now the coin is changing, but in essentially budget for the Uranus transits in your life, both on the, the monthly, and I uh, began to do what is seemed to be pioneering job. I haven't seen anyone doing that. It doesn't mean that people don't do it. I haven't seen. Um, and it's pioneering job of looking at your expenses and seeing when is money flying out of the pocket and instead of resisting it, uh, which can bring a deeper backfire, um, budgeting for it, okay, budgeting for it, paying attention to it, understanding that something there is liberating in your life energy and when it is with Mercury, with Mars as well, with Venus in hard aspects, this is expensive, okay, also with Mercury. And so, um, when it comes to relationships, Uranus gives us the unusual relational patterns but also relationships that challenge our notions of a lot a lot of everything because it's your life energy okay if the Saturn Pluto is a change from the core Uranus is also working from the core but more on the Kundalini energy if the Saturn is working on aligning your bones okay your spine and your structure, transforming your structure, and then purging all the fears, purging all the wars, the traumas, the things that bother you. Uranus is working on the energy, okay, on the life energy that flows through your body, okay? Uh, and right now, Saturn is actually applying to sextile, slowly applying to sextile Uranus. So we will see the connection between the, uh, our bones and their structure and the flow of creative energy. And Uranus hard aspects, whether it's Venus or Mars, they um, liberate something in our life energy that is more important than our current commitments. And as relational astrologer, I say it a lot, when I had been receiving clients, then they would ask me about Uranus relationships Usually it would be, I think I found my twin flame. I was married, they were married, uh, we got together, we both left our marriages, and immediately I understand it's nothing to do with relationships so much as what has changed in your life other than that. And that can be, I wrote a book, I began to play guitar, I um, uh, uh, began to do some acting roles, I began to uh, take on different missions, different life missions. Okay? Things that have been, dreams that have been blocked are being released through this surge of energy and the encounter with another person can be a collision that releases that. Now, um, but if you ask yourself of what will be of the relationship, now we, as Mars is trying in Neptune, it's a good time to talk about it. You should not be sacrificing your dreams. Okay? Um, think about, uh, uh, let's say, case. Okay, one partner is having midlife crisis, uh, and one partner is uh, uh, married, already had children, already this, already that. They need, they have intense love affair, and they decide maybe they want to commit. But one partner said, I already had the children, okay? So if you ask, what would be the commitment style? Even if they marry, it has to be what? Open relationship. Because the partner that still wants children will need to find someone to have a children. So you cannot sacrifice your dreams for your relationships. And depending on which culture you grew up on, it's, it's the relation to Uranus. Some can feel tremendous betrayal. Some can feel um, oppression. Some can feel uh, uh, they've been cheated on. Uh, and some can um, uh, over-ideate, okay? So, Uranus is, is coming to liberate you 
in the sense that there are dreams you haven't yet worked on, Uranus is making sure you're not abandoning these dreams. And you won't be able to do anything, okay? Uranus right now is in my third house, which is uh, uh, siblings and so, but it's also business, communication, travel, garden. And before that, I began to do like interviews with people, podcasts. Then I was completely unappointable and I began to work the garden with the moon and then do the half moon. So like really renovating the entire third house. So that of course has changed my communication um, and there are more things to go. Okay, it ha it's not done with my third house, but this is how all these things will be kind of brought up together and together with relations, relational astrology. Um, astrology of uh, divorces is also Uranus, um, uh, but also uh, the unusual relationships, the liberation that comes in your relations and that can leave people, especially if you have age gap and you're not both experiencing it at the same time, um, that can leave one person feeling very stranded and as one person is suddenly blooming and shining and okay, something going on with them and the other person can feel like they are the choir to, um, uh, to that star, okay, that, that's being formed. Um, if birthing is associated with Uranus, this birthing may bring divorce, I know, because I am such a child, okay? <laughs> and, um, and then can create a lot of trauma, especially if one or both partners have been sacrificing a lot for the connection, or for the other. Um, when it comes to uh, what, when it comes to breakups, okay? If there are breakups, it's usually um, because to begin with, people sacrificed something that they could not allow themselves to sacrifice. But when it comes to the relation that is formed as a result of this breakup or this cheating or this affair or whatnot, you have to also guard that you're not sacrificing something that you cannot afford to sacrifice. Okay, one extreme example is what I give with, with children, um, but that can also be, if you think about this, the couples where one partner travels with another partner uh, because that other partner wants to study abroad, okay, or they compromise on which place to study, then there would have to be a Uranus transit where the partner that has sacrificed a lot, they have a Uranus transit where they are finding themselves now. Um, think about also when people are releasing from places of isolation of this now there's a lot of like kidnapped people being uh, returning and so on don't expect them to just go to work to sit down or even to rest okay that's a part of okay of the liberation um, and Uranus is there to make sure that we don't neglect our dreams uh, is reminding us that we did not come here to suffer okay while uranus transits can be very very challenging okay they can be very very challenging um, they are serving as a reminder that we also have certain uh, uh, dreams and that can be a collision of what keeps you from achieving your dreams. I can give example from my life. Around 2006, 2007, I had given up because of financial struggles. I had given up uh, my dream to study. Okay. And I felt like I had no access to complete my dreams. But what I was doing, I was writing, I was doing screenwriting, I was editing my mother's book, uh, I was singing a little. And then I had connection with person that he only worked by the moods. Yes, he was MK Ultra and so on, but only worked by the most. Pay a lot of attention to the question how, not just why, um, or not at all why. Okay, that was the polarity. And uh, um, completely had no routine. Okay, very Iranian. And unfortunately, I also went through a sexual boundary violation there, which was not, um, it was very difficult uh, because of uh, situations that they were in, which is MKUltra. 
uh, I believe, or satanic abuse at some place in their history. Um, but other than that, what, what the other things is that no longer could I be people pleasing. Okay, no longer could I be so diplomatic because I was very diplomatic. I began to set boundaries like never before, even within my family. To say no like never before. It was impossible to tie me up to schedule, to a job, to anything. It was, it, it was a process and it became so much so. And then I began to even more, I always had the fighting corruption thing, but even more. Then um, it got into a place where I was literally paid to not work and was offered uh, studies, okay, funding for studies. So through that crazy making, I received studies. This is not the best way to receive that, but there was something very completely blocked because there was no way I could make it with work and I didn't want to take a loan. It came to the point where I had checks that were not covered and through the debt, I got basically funding for studies, Saturn in the ninth house. So it was uh, one of the harshest stories. This was Saturn, uh, Uranus square when Uranus was uh, applying to touch on my, on my Lilith, on my uh, black moon Lilith. Uh, and uh, I do not wish this to my enemies. Uh, it is also the case that I definitely needed to study. I definitely needed to um, to have that dream fulfilled and indeed in studies I was creating a lot, I was painting a lot, I was uh, living a lot, okay, then there would be the me too where I would talk about the cult <laughs> and I actually talk about it with, with Israeli lawyers and uh, people who are beginner lawyers um, and they're not just Israeli lawyers, <laughs> okay. But this is something, uh, because they are affected by this, okay? So, um, for my uh, uh, Uranus conjunct to Mercury, that was the Me Too era. And I was addressing the cult, I was addressing scientific revolution, I was addressing the fact that science moves in the salami. <laughs> so the salami, that's kind of like, I call it an Italian strike. Um, it's the way you do with academia, okay? You just slice one article into a million because you have to do the industrial thing of having articles all the time. Um, so I addressed all the things that are linked into the sexual energy boundaries violation, okay? And how that holistically affects um, uh, people. And um then Uranus would go on uh, my Venus and I would begin like this podcast, uh, try to channel, okay, do um, other things. Um, Uranus going over my sun, so a lot of creativity. I was in Netherlands, I was creating every day. I was channeling, okay, the things that will later begin to be the basis for what I expands upon cooling as well. Um, and... Uh, what's really important in, in this conglomerate is, first of all, to understand it's a conglomerate, okay? Um, it is not something you do, um, it's, it's not a one-time one thing, okay? It's not something you have a very ordered process of going through, okay? It is, um, but it is something that is meant to liberate you in some way, shape or form. And you want to think about, well, how is it going? Where is it going? There is a dream there. There is a, a wish, a quest for something to be liberated. Whether that has to do with relations, speech, uh, assets, um, uh, gardening, uh, beauty, or whether it has to do with Mars, okay? So real estate uh, initiations, um, a brotherly love, okay, for some people that can be that, um, and, and so on. So, this is where, um, this is where some things can also become exposed, they are in the air, explosives, okay. Right now we have Mercury opposing Uranus, 
So communication can be explosive. Something is out in the open. Um, but also where there are blockages to communication, they can also be addressed for the underlying cause. Okay, for the underlying cause. Uh, something explodes, or something is in the air. If I go back to my Me Too era, then I wrote a satire, and that explodes for, uh, exploded the entire cult, okay, which is the Masons. I had no idea <laughs> that has to do with 7th October, with the World War, and I had no idea. Okay, For me, it just needed to come out of the body, and I couldn't write it to my dear diary. And before that, if, before I crossed this threshold, I could not speak. I had to go to EMDR in order to speak, okay, for in therapy, to not speak so that I can have healing. And the EMDR saw the two figures that were in front of me and that I'm dealing with, but they didn't say anything and their faces were freezing. So there was some, and I didn't know that EMDR has to do with Scientology, uh, but they didn't tell me anything, okay? So there was something very, very strange about this. Uh, I know it's now related to uh, MK Ultra, and then the, when that therapist was gaslighting me, I would go to the therapist that was one of these two figures that the previous therapist saw eventually, and uh, everybody know who they don't know what energy is. Um, so now, when it comes to um, now when it comes to what's happening in those Uranus situations is with the job if you if you're holding on to a safety job it's not Mars this opposition with Pluto is not going to allow this because Mars is sextiling Uranus but you will be facilitated by some sort of a revolutionary action that you take um, if it's to do like me with housing, there's going to be some sort of revolutionary action. You're going to have to do it over and then do it over because it's uh, uh, up until the spring, okay, up until April. And if it is relational, really, about all of your dreams, I want you to think, what have you been sacrificing, what dreams have you been sacrificing that the line dormant? Because this Mars is awakening that which is dormant in you. Um, I came to check on person that had a point very close to this Mars and energy were like, we hear kind of like what you're doing here. And I was like, I came to check up on you because you know, uh, this transit is so harsh. I was like, you are the, tra <laughs> you are the transit, okay? okay like what what did you put yourself in here okay like i'm a part of the problem um and uh i i don't i don't know if, okay for what it is but that can be also where something's been holding on something is meant to arise something is meant to come to com not to completion because mars is opening a cycle with uranus but Again, any dream you had laying dormant um, is not like it's, it's it's not going to go for you to not act on your dreams. Your health is not going to be healthy. <laughs> okay, my Navamsha has Uranus in Capricorn, tropical Capricorn. It has to do with the teeth. So I saw when I tried to do the regular things with the teeth, even holistic ones don't work very well. I put some Achillea and then I begin to say names of people. And I remember that my natal Saturn is in Scorpio and this uh, Mars is in Scorpio as well. And this to do with names of people that were doing something that could have assassinated me. Okay, because it's a retrograde 22. Um, so this is how Uranus... I was just trying to tend to my teeth. <laughs> okay. This is the part of how Uranus operates. Um, there is also, if something is missing in your life, okay, some energy. When I began to work with, on water expense upon cooling, um, I had no idea where it would lead. Uh, and I see more missing cases addressed as cold cases. 
also in the uh, Parada Freeze Foundation, which I love seeing. Um, and you have to surrender things. But again, it's the importance is that you don't sacrifice your dreams. Uh, and your dreams are boundaries, okay? Sacrificing of your dream is a boundary. And this is also pertaining to your sexual energy, because you want to connect you with your sexual energy, then um, uh, sex, pionage, sex work disconnects you. For me, maybe you can do it uh, as long as it reconnects you with your sexual energy. The minute it disconnects you, this is happening also right now. I see with OnlyFans, with this, with that. Um, just read uh, uh, on YouTube someone who was a bunny, Playboy bunny, and now she lives in a tent in the street because it disconnects you from abundance, from sense of connection, and from your sexual energy, okay? Which means your dreams. Of what you came here to do, your life energy. So, um, so this is why uh, uh, for all this MK Ultra stuff, we're gonna have polarities because the, because of these things that are so encompassing that whichever dream you want to achieve, sometimes including bringing child to the world, then this serves as polarities. For example, I learned about a woman called Eliza. Of course, it's not her real name. And she was a spy, sex espionage in uh, Soviet Union. And now she's leading, teaching people about the seducing and temptation and so, but also addressing willing consent. And she still has a difficulty. She's very, very beautiful, very, very, um, and not just her natural beauty, but is also um, uh, taking good care of herself, always looking the best, dressed the best, okay, very visually, uh, perfect and I'm the ex exactly the opposite okay <laughs> I can barely take care of myself um, but uh, from the polarity here is that she went through this uh, on the physical level and it's difficult for her to connect into her body and for me I because of, uh, 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 of the value villain concept was so strong I was um, uh, on the other polarity, so I use the privileges of the other polarity, which is connection to the body, and I whistleblow, okay? Naturally, I whistleblow naturally, and information is more correct, because when you're not fragmented, then you can, you actually, the information is actually good, okay? So, <laughs> I said, Brussels, I said, what I said, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, but the thing is that you see how this polarity comes about that because of her, I know all sex work is sex espionage. Okay, I could connect for the dots and see the things that I always felt true, but that I felt it true, it doesn't mean that it's true for everybody. And now you run into these polarities that are changing the world and this espionage has to do with MK Ultra. Uh, this is also pertaining to your dreams and the goals. Um, now with Uranus in the yin sign, a lot of also men had been hard time to recover from post-trauma, um, uh, 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 even if they were uh, sexually assaulted and so on, because they lived in societies where the yin, everything that's considered feminine, okay, is rejected. So being victim, considered feminine. So being assaulted, considered feminine. So losing war, considered feminine. So being a trauma victim or something that you don't even see uh, physically, considered feminine. It's all yin. But because I did not give reverence and honor to yin, which by the way, when I was TA in 2017, I talked about yin and yang in out of war because if our soldiers are not getting correct training with yin and yang they're more susceptible to trauma and find it more difficult to recover okay i don't know how much people were able to perceive of what i say um but this is you know it is so correct the people that had the good education about the yin and yang and they know that yang does not punish yin which is important, because if you have that, then it's all mixed up again. Then 
is easier time. It is true that you need to be active about what the trauma, but, but active to change for what caused the trauma. And sometimes active to change for what caused the trauma is actually embracing yin. Also for me, okay, when I was hurt, uh, let's say 2007, even a person that hurt me, because he also had no sources, okay, his uh, psychologist was giving him the half ha haphazard solutions that they had and so on, um, she said, you need to talk about your feelings. And I did not know such things. So if you want to feel a feel, don't, you don't have to talk about this. Um, but he said, no, this is relieving. You need someone you can trust to talk about it, which I had none. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and they were not ready to accept. For, it's not, they were not ready to receive information of what I said. That you, you violated my sexual boundaries. That was the problem. Not you misled me, you did you that. No. It was violation of the sexual boundaries that created this fragmentation. Of course not, because very likely it happened to them, and to accept this, they would bring up memories of something that perhaps happened to them, maybe at church, maybe, I don't know, okay? So, and it uh, always has to do with grief, okay? So, the Uranus creates for such polarities and juxtapositions not just the Saturn Pluto. Saturn Pluto, they do this also. This is the core van out which I addressed. But the Uranus relations, they create for such polarities where, okay, you can't ignore of what is being brought up to the surface and you will keep addressing that with the Uranus transits that come and this is going to be unexpected, but it's also timely. Okay, so um, all these crisis events, okay, if I think about me coming to check up on somebody that, that has this transit very, 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 very tough, and I was like, who am I in their life? And I'm like, I'm Jupiter, yes, <laughs> but <laughs> what do they have in Jupiter? Uh, my, my, my Mars, <laughs> okay. It's like, you are the problem. What did I do? I come to check if you're okay. You are the problem. <laughs> okay. But of course, with every person, that brings in something. Okay. For me, that person's energy was uh, kind of like a love buffer. Okay. Uh, I'm not even talking about like sexuality. It's just kind of like a love buffer. It's like feeling emotionally supported and able to contain uh, tensions. So, uh, but that can be... Um, the kind of weirdness around uh, Uranus and uh, again it is so important to make sure you're not sacrificing anything sometimes it can be your own relational style if you are a non-monogamous in monogamy and it is too much sacrifice because there is a range um, don't expect this don't expect Uranus to go over your relational planets, your, you know, whatever, uh, and, and uh, for things to go smoothly. Uh, on the other hand, if you're monogamous, this can do the other way around. If you've been sacrificing that in favor of relationship, Uranus can bring divorce. Um, uh, so uh, not to sacrifice your dreams, especially those the dreams that, is, that seem dormant, okay? Uh, Uranus is a lot to do with fertility because it's sexual energy. So it can be the sudden, the sudden babies. And, um, and, it, and it has such a funny way of addressing things that is so unexpected and even shocking. Okay? Um, and the, you can discover sides of yourself you weren't even aware of. Um, that that hold these juxtapositions, these dissonances, um, uh, the polarities between people that are unusual, but they meant to curate for the alignment with sexual energy, so that you come here to manifest your dreams, um, and that is where we all are uh, liberated. And right now, this sense of liberation, with better per se, it's tough. With Mercury today, it's shocking, okay, shocking communication or blocking of communication because there's the blinking eye 
it can take away something. Um, and with Mars, it is still the sextile. Okay, Mars is still in sextile relationships to Uranus. So it, it takes revolutionary action. Support might come from places you didn't even think. Uh, people having sudden Eurekas, people taking suddenly space from one another, um, surrendering the situation, allowing dynamics to transform, relational dynamics can transform because Mars is in the sign of the moon. And uh, uh, some even relational traumas can suddenly wither away, okay? Um, there can be an emotional upheaval and then poof, like nothing. Um, and, and then this is important. Uh, if you have if Mars is also going to, with a trine to you, Neptune, don't underestimate the trine because it's not a hard aspect, but still there's a breakage of the dream in favor of an actual real dream. Think about, again, for your favorite soccer team or your favorite football team, and then your sense of belonging and how it is manipulated politically, financially, relationally. Uh, so something can break there, but then there is a rain statement of a genuine connection, okay? A genuine sense of belonging. We have to surrender things, and it can be a sometimes, let's say, uh, I don't know, you date someone, you take them to your favorite football team because you want to, you want to share your world with them. They have a ton of triggers because this actor was uh, raping this 13 years old boy and this uh, player raping this 13 years old girl and this and that. And for you, you're just trying to share your inner home with someone. Um, and both of you have to accommodate to the new reality that something is broken here. And, but within a, surrendering that, you find a genuine sense of connection and a reconnection. Um, when I was X-Files fan, we had all the cast and crew, everybody sexually harassed everybody. Men, women, everybody. So we all had to just like accept that this is the situation. Um, and that was years before the Me Too. And that was uh, uh, what we all had to deal with. And for many of us, uh, teenagers, so that would be our obsession. For me, this is the through which I studied screenwriting at first. And uh, a lot of my English language was uh, acquired at that time. Um, reached all up to the way that I'm the sister spooky on the slates of that. I think it was the key manners episode. Like, and, and then you have that everybody sexual harassment. Okay. Or one of my favorite actors, Jesse Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, is just saying, okay, we were working with Menachem Golan and that he said, we were saving money for the lawsuits from the women. Very honest. And he was himself sexually harassed when he worked for a massage. Um, okay, so that was before we knew about the MK Ultra and how they train them, which is death camps, rape death camps, and they have to torture them. So they, they fragment their, with, with the, like to show the fragmented personality. Um, so you see that we are, we are having another, with better per se, we are having another move on these fractures, but from within the fractured reality for, to create authentic dreams and not to sacrifice oneself and not to sacrifice our dreams either. That's why I say MK Ultra Mut Kaput Gain. Uh, and this is what this very intense Mars opposition Pluto is also about. Okay? Depending of Mars is day chart or night chart, this can be more or less little, and it can be little, um, but this is why we stand 10 toes down, because no dreams can be sacrificed and no sexual boundaries can be violated for the achievement of these dreams. Um, and that stands in contrast with marginalized people who were in situations that without the boundaries being violated, they had no housing, no income, and so on, but also suffer addictions because of this. Um, and then the AI comes and overtakes them with sex bots. So, 